What is up everybody? Welcome to our junior high interactive family experience. My name is Pastor Ethan and today is a great day. In fact, does anyone know what day it is today? Okay, yes, today is Sunday. Good job, good job. Um, yes, today is May 9th. Well done. But, but something about today is really, really special. It's Mother's Day! Now, I know some of you watching today are, are way too cool to do this, but, but if your mom is sitting beside you or somewhere close by in the house, I want you to stand up and give her a huge hug. Do it right now. Go, go give your mom a hug and tell her all the reasons why she deserves to be celebrated today. All right, if you gave your mom a hug, great job. Giving your mom a hug is definitely something you can do to show that you love and appreciate her. Uh, I hope you and your family have a great Mother's Day today. I know here at Lake Point, we love and appreciate all of our parents, but today we want to say a special thanks to our moms. You guys are heroes and we hope you feel honored and celebrated today. All right, well, let me tell you what's coming up in our interactive family experience. We're gonna fill out an online connection card. Um, and so parents, get ready with your smartphones. Uh, we're gonna have some friendly family competition. We're gonna head into week three of our series called Habits. And then all throughout our teaching video today, we are gonna pause and have some great discussion. Now, I wanna remind all of our parents watching this morning that you are the ones who will be leading those discussions today. And those questions, they can be found and downloaded from an email I sent out yesterday. And you can also find them in our Junior High Facebook group. If you didn't get that email, or if you haven't joined our Facebook group, make sure you let me know so we can add you to our mailing list and send you an invite. Why? Because the very best way to do these interactive experiences is by leading those discussions with your student. In fact, it's the entire reason why we do this every week so that you can have a clearer window into the spiritual development of your student and to create a space where you're helping them grow into everything God created them to be. So if you need to pause the video and download those discussion guides, please do so now. Well, we are about to get into our series, but before we do, we would love to hear from you. We want to stay connected and check in, and so we have something called a connection card where we can do that. The connection card is found right on the main page of the Lake Point app, and so we would love if you would take the next 60 seconds and fill out the card. It's basically like signing our guest book and letting us know you were here. So let's take the next minute and fill out the card together. Thank you so much for completing the connection card and signing our guest book. Now, every week here at Junior High, we have some friendly family competition. And today, we have a very special activity that involves our mom. Here we go. All righty. Well, today, all you need is yourself and your mom. So if you and dad are watching today or an older sibling, or if you're just watching by yourself, pause and go get your mom. The two of you are gonna pair up and put a two minute timer on the clock. You're gonna count down from three and on go, you will discover things that you have in common. The challenge is to find as many similarities as possible before the time is up. 
and if you want to broaden the challenge to include other family members, then the team who can find the most similarities in two minutes will be the winners. All right, go for it. How'd you do? How many similarities did you find? If you just take the next two minutes and let us know in our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group, we will send you a Tim Hortons gift card. Or if you don't have Facebook, you can just email me at ethan at lakepoint.church. All right, we are gonna switch gears and head into the teaching portion of junior high today. And I'm really excited uh, for this week as we head into week three of our series called Habits. We're actually gonna learn how to talk to God. Y'all know what this, you know what this is, right? The, uh, <clears throat> the guy that lives in here? What's his name? Genie, yeah. Hey, you know what this is, right? You, ha have you seen the movie Aladdin? Basically, this guy named Aladdin finds a lamp with uh, a genie inside of it, and this genie is willing to grant him three wishes. So, with the sky as the absolute limit, Aladdin gets to pick any three things, and they're gonna happen. I wish for a trillion dollars, my own personal donut machine. Not, I don't wish for donuts. Bad wish. Wish for a donut machine. Make unlimited donuts. Aladdin isn't used to getting what he wants, so this is pretty exciting for him. Now, unfortunately, Aladdin is just a movie, a very good movie, but I don't, I don't know anybody who's actually found a magic lamp that housed a wish-granting genie. But I do know that we can all relate to what it feels like to just wish for something, to want something, to hope for something so much that we'd give just about anything to make it happen. I wished for something when I was in middle school and it was a cell phone. See, all my friends had cell phones and I thought, if I could just get a cell phone, I would be so cool. I'd be able to talk to all my friends. This would be great. I wished for this, I asked for it. I kind of wished my parents would get me one and eventually my parents said, sure, you can get a cell phone. You just have to pay for it. So my wish ended up with me getting a job. Now, maybe what you want right now is different than what I wanted back in school, but I bet you can relate to how I tried to make it a reality in my life. I asked about it all the time. I thought about it all the time. I tried anything I could to make it happen. I even went as far as to pray to God that it would happen, a lot. Right now, we're talking about habits that can help us connect with and know God better. Habits that help us develop an everyday faith. Habits are these routine behaviors that we tend to do a lot. They're things that are on repeat in our lives, things we do every day. And our good habits, they have a way of making our lives better. Spiritual habits are things we do every day to help us grow our faith. They're things that when we do them, they help us to know God better. They help us to have an everyday faith. And one of the best spiritual habits we can develop is talking to God through prayer. I guess that a lot of us think about prayer the same way we think about that genie in a lamp. We go to God with our wishes, our wants, our hopes, but if he doesn't answer our request, we tend to toss him to the side. Now, have you ever gone to God with a request that you felt like he didn't answer? Maybe you wanted to make the team or pass a test or see your TikTok go viral. So you put in the effort to practice or to study or to learn the TikTok dance. You prayed and prayed that it would pay off. But when the results came in, they weren't what you hoped for. 
Or maybe you've taken some bigger things to God in prayer. Maybe you've prayed that he'd heal someone you loved or that he'd keep your parents from splitting up or that he'd help you through a painful situation with a friend. But things didn't turn out the way you prayed they would and it left you feeling disappointed, confused, and frustrated. No matter what we've prayed for, when things don't happen the way we hope they will, we can begin to question not just our prayers, but God himself. When our prayers aren't answered, we may start to wonder about God. Does he hear my prayers? Does he even care about what I'm feeling or experiencing? Is he even there? If you've ever asked any of those questions or felt like God was silent when you prayed, you're not alone. We've all felt that way at some point. We've all wondered how prayer can actually help us know God better when it feels like he's not there at all. How are we supposed to connect with God when the connection through prayer feels broken? What if I told you that I think the reason we feel that way about prayer has less to do with God and more to do with us? Think about some of the other important relationships in your life. People you're close to and connected with. People like your parents or your siblings or your best friend or even your small group. What do you talk to them about? What are most of your conversations about? I doubt each of you spend every FaceTime chat, hangout, DM, asking them for things you want or hope for. Why? Well, for starters, they probably don't have the ability to do the whole genie in the lamp thing for you. But more than that, you talk to the closest people in your life about more than just your needs, wants, and wishes because you want them to know more than that about you. And you wanna know more than that about them as well. In other words, you want a real relationship. And I don't know about you, but that's the kind of relationship I want with God too. See, God wants to be much more than a genie granting wishes. He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to connect with us every single day, and he wants us to know him. Prayer gives us a great place to start. Prayer is a habit that helps us have an everyday kind of faith with God. Maybe the reason we're frustrated or hurt or ready to give up on God when he doesn't seem to answer our prayers is because we're approaching prayer with the wrong mindset. A long time ago, there was a guy named Paul who dedicated most of his life to traveling around teaching people all about God. Paul was convinced that knowing God was the ultimate goal in life. He believed that a relationship with God was better than anything we could think of or ask for. And Paul wanted to make sure that everyone else, all the other believers knew that too. Paul spent a lot of time like writing letters to the early churches to encourage them. And what's interesting was that a lot of these churches were going through really rough times. The government was coming after them, people were trying to keep them from talking about God, and they were even being threatened on a regular basis. So it's no surprise that the people in the churches were praying a lot. They were asking God to save them and protect them. They were asking him to get them out of the mess that they were in. When Paul wrote to one of these churches to encourage them, he let them know that he was praying too. But his prayer was different. And I think what Paul said here is something that can actually change the way that we think about prayer. Here's what he wrote. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Did you catch that? Paul didn't pray for protection or for their situation to end. Instead, he prayed that they'd grow in their faith, that they'd keep getting to know God better no matter what happened. Of all the messages Paul could have possibly delivered, why did he choose that one? I think it's because Paul knew that prayer is so much more than just asking for God's help. It's about so much more than wants and needs and requests, even though God wants to know those things too. Prayer is ultimately about getting to know God better. Talking to God helps us know him better. When you pray to God, you're talking to him about your life. You're telling him what's happening in the world and asking for his help to figure it out. And you're learning more about his love for you, his compassion, and his perfect plan for your life. That's a relationship. And whether you realize it or not, that's what prayer is really all about. It's about being in a relationship with God. Sure, getting everything you want would be super nice. And certainly, I'm not trying to say that it's not disappointing when the things you pray for don't happen. But what I'm saying is that even when the answer is no, prayer still gives us the opportunity to know God better than we did before. When your prayers aren't answered, talk to God about it. And when everything turns out just like you had hoped, talk to God about that too. Because talking with God helps us know Him better. So let's change the way we think about prayer. Let's think of it like having a conversation with God. For some of us, that's gonna be really easy to understand. 
But for others of us, carrying on a conversation with God sounds really hard. Some of us have been taught that talking to God means, means bowing our heads and closing our eyes and folding our hands together. But the truth is, we can talk to God in a lot of different ways too. We can talk out loud to him while taking a walk. We can sing a song. We can even write our thoughts down in a journal. Connect with him in a way that works for you. And this week, I want you to commit to giving prayer a try. Remember, you can talk to God about anything. He wants to hear what's on your mind. You can start by praying like this. First, thank him for all the good things in your life, like your friends or a sunny day or a vacation from school. Talk to him about the things you're grateful for right now. Next, tell him what's worrying you. If you're concerned about the health of a loved one or feeling left out in your friend group or struggling to overcome a mistake you've made, God wants to hear about it. Sharing the good and the bad allows you to appreciate the way God loves and forgives you no matter what. Then talk to him about what you need. God wants to know what you're thinking. So tell him, ask him for help where you need it. Pray for him to step in and fix things that feel broken. Ask him to remind you that he's listening and working for your good, even if the answer doesn't come the way you want it to. And finally, trust him. The more you talk to God, the more you'll get to know him. And the more you know him, the more you'll trust him. The more you trust him, the more you'll want to talk to him. Because talking to God helps us know him better. And when we make a habit of talking to God, we make learning about him a part of our everyday faith. One of the best places to start when it comes to prayer is in your group. We created these groups to be spaces where you can not only connect with God, but connect with other people. And your group leader is a great person to help you think about how you pray and talk to God. Listen, uh, for some of you, this whole idea of talking to God through prayer sounds like an easy thing to do. For others, it's something that's new and intimidating. Maybe you pray because uh, it's just something you think you're supposed to do. Or maybe uh, for you, prayer is frustrating or even disappointing because your prayers haven't been answered the way you wanted in the past. Well, the good news is, you aren't alone in how you feel or in what you've experienced with, with prayer. But I want to encourage you today to just start wherever you're at. Sometimes just being open to trying is the best place to begin. Remember, prayer is a conversation with God, and we can talk to Him in a lot of different ways. Praying isn't just bowing our heads and closing our eyes and folding our hands. We can pray while taking a walk or singing a song or writing a journal or jumping on your trampoline or while you're listening to your teacher give tomorrow's lesson. I mean. The options really are endless. So today, could, could we commit to giving prayer a try? Could we start by, by just simply thanking God for what we're grateful for, or just telling him what we're worried about, or sharing our needs and wants, and, and trusting that he loves and cares about us? When we make a habit of talking to God, we make learning about him part of our everyday faith. Thank you so much for participating today. Remember to post a photo of your family participating today in our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group and you could be the proud winner of a Tim Hortons gift card. Now to close our time this morning, take the next two minutes to pray together as a family and then head to the Lake Point app and access our weekday devotionals that go along with our series. You'll find them in the family resources section and you can also find the link um, in the video description right below me. Have a wonderful week, friends. Have a happy Mother's Day.